Praise the Lord, everyone. God is good to us. Amen. Today's blog title is Offering Himself as a Sacrifice. Remember about two days ago, we, uh, we blogged about did the Father sacrifice his own son? This is connected to that one. Kind of a part two, okay? Remember in Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, it says, And Abraham said, My son, God, will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So now... If you want to understand better, you can go watch the other uh, title called Did the Father Sacrifice His Own Son? Watch that one first and then you can come back to this one. So here, God's already been manifested as flesh. And Jesus is speaking here. And he says, Greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down, meaning to give up or sacrifice his life for his friends. So if someone gives up their time and their will and their want to help you with what you need, that is a great love. They're willing to help you and put away the things that they need to be doing. So great love hath no man in this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. God truly loved us. We'll connect different verses to help you understand the title. You can go ahead and write down notes as well, so you'll be able to follow along. So next we're going to Galatians 1 and 4. Who gave himself the showing one, him, singular. for our sins that he might deliver us from this present, meaning right now, this present evil world. <coughs> According to the will of God and our Father. That's his desire, so meaning the will of meaning the desire of God. So watch the signs. It says, who gave himself for our sins? That he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So let's connect some more verses. 
So next. <coughs> is Ephesians 4, uh, I'm sorry, is Ephesians 5, and verse 2. And walk in love. As Christ, meaning Messiah as well, also hath loved us. So remember that word loved, okay? In the next verse, we'll connect that word love again. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Meaning it smelled great. So did the father sacrifice his own son? No. God stopped Abraham. He did not allow him to kill Isaac. It's an abomination to God if if people sacrifice their children because he laid down himself for us. And remember, Abraham said, son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And that verse shows us that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He was a sacrifice for us. He didn't send someone else. God loves us, so he's going to sacrifice another. It's not how it works. Okay, so let's go to the next verse for a little bit more support. So like I mentioned before, the Bible is like a puzzle. Kind of like a saying as you go into the store and you look at it and you want to buy a puzzle, maybe a 500 piece puzzle of nature, of mountains, and trees, and a river. And the next one's maybe a picture of a city, of New York, or China, or whatever. And the next one maybe is the animals. Maybe you fall in love with the animal one, it's a 500 piece. So you buy it, you don't steal it, you bought it. You go home, you cut it open, and your table's nice and clean, and you open the box, you dump out all the pieces, 500 pieces, and you make sure not to lose not even one. Because if you lose one, oh no, your whole puzzle's ruined. So what do you start with? You usually start with the frame. And you follow the picture and you start to add more and more until it's all 500 are put together to show one picture. It's the same thing with verses. It's very important. You start maybe with John. Oh, it's precious. We've got to keep it. We've got to go to Galatians. And then we go to Ephesians. Now Titus. It's another piece of the puzzle. <coughs> Says who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity so you'll see that side either iniquity as a sin or the rebellious side I meaning you don't follow law Okay. Am I perfect? No. 
Are you perfect? No. Just let you know, I'm flesh. Sometimes I make mistakes, but God is perfect. Doesn't mean I go ahead and sin on purpose, but yes, sometimes we do make mistakes, and we have to ask for that forgiveness, okay? And purify it unto himself, a peculiar people, Zealous of good works. It means it's very motivated. Kind of like you have a fire underneath you. You know, if you don't have that fire inside you and motivation inside of you, you don't have that zeal to do things. So this is ze zealous of good works. Meaning you are motivated. You want to do what we need to do for God. So who gave himself for us? Again, himself meaning one. So who, who purified our sins? Jesus did. So now, so here's our other piece. 1 John 3 and 16. And yes, we used this two days ago as well, but we use the same verse over and over again to impress that it's precious and it's all connected. It's all the life of God. It says, hereby perceive, meaning to know. We, the love of God. It says, hereby, we know the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You sacrifice your time, what you need to do for your brothers and sisters to help them. He laid down his life to save us. He was a sacrifice. So like in the Old Testament, and Abraham, as we've discussed, they would sacrifice an animal, a pure and good and perfect animal. And that would not remove their sin, but postpone their sin for the next year, leading up to the crucifixion. <coughs> All the way up to Calvary, okay? And so God became the perfect sacrifice. So here's another piece we're going to go to. We're going to Revelations 1 and 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten, meaning firstborn of the dead. And the prince, meaning our uh, prince of the kings, in Isaiah we, Isaiah, we hear that they shall call his name wonderful, the prince of peace. Okay? <coughs> so it says, And the prince of kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, him again, meaning singular, one, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. 
Do we have two different bloods? No, we have one. And we know that God doesn't have blood because he's a spirit. He doesn't have that physical flesh anymore. And that's why he needed to become flesh. So let's look at this last piece here. Acts chapter 20. It says, take heed, meaning listen or pay attention. It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock. Meaning groups of sheep here. Over through which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. We have overseers, meaning more than one. He's talking about setting up churches here. And we see our pastors as shepherds, taking care of his group of people as a flock of sheep. He oversees them. They're under the pastor. And it says to feed the church of God. Meaning of feeding the people of God, feeding the word of God to them in their hearts and their souls, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The people belong to God. He bought our souls with his own blood. But God has blood? How? Again, this is when we're talking about when he became flesh and became our savior and our sacrifice for the redemption of our sins. He says, but God, but God, why let thou forsake me? Says, my God, my God, why dost thou forsake us me? If you read Psalms chapter 22, he's talking about Calvary. This is why we started <coughs> Bible, starting with Jesus, and then opening into a book, because everything is connected to him. He shows his love. God sacrificed his throne to become flesh, to be this ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Amen? Love you all. Bless you.